Hi everyone, it's Ken Lam again, music director of the Illinois Symphony Orchestra. Joining me is Ellie Kirk, uh, who is our principal harpist. Hi Ellie. Hi Ken. Uh, first of all, Ellie, thank you so much for uh, doing a, a recital for us at uh, Sunday at six. And I, you know, I think everyone sort of, you can't really miss the harp on stage. But, um, it's quite large, it's, yes. <laughs> but can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where have you grown up and how have you come to, to the harp and so on? Yeah, of course. I grew up in Evanston, Illinois. Um, both my parents are musicians in the Lyric Opera of Chicago. Um, so I actually first saw and heard the harp when I was three years old. Um, my mom was good friends with the former um, harp professor at Northwestern, Liz Chafani, and she was doing a, a pedagogy unit with her grad students to like teach them how to teach the harp. They needed a small child to be like their final exam. <laughs> and my mom volunteered me for that position. Um, so I just fell in love with the harp at that point. And I kept begging my mom and dad for lessons and to get my own harp. And um, I started taking lessons when I was five, a few years later. Oh my so goodness. So it's been a while, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. And how, so did you, where did you go to school and how did you end up back in Chicago? Yeah, I, um, I went to um, Columbia University in New York for my undergrad. Um, I did my bachelor's in neuroscience and behavior. So very different Goodness. from music, but um, a lot of interesting overlaps, I think. Um, and I, you know, I still played the harp. I did a lot of musical activities during that time but it just wasn't my academic focus. Um, and then after that, I came back to Chicago um, to do my master's degree at Roosevelt University, um, Chicago College of Performing Arts. So, so that's how I ended up back here. <laughs> well, neurosciences, so, uh, you, so growing up, you did basically both. You, know, you took, played the harp very seriously, obviously, and then probably excelled in academics and and so on. So why, so the neuroscience bit, did, did it take, what made you not continue with that and go to the harp? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, in my, in my junior year of undergrad, I was sort of thinking about, you know, if I want to do grad school, I should think about it now. Um, and I had done a few different sort of research internships in labs, um, doing kind of like the grunt work. Um, in the sciences, which was really cool, but I just, I don't know, I couldn't really see myself doing it long term. And I was sort of reflecting on the year and thinking about the moments that I really enjoyed the most and felt the most fulfilled. And that was always performing. So I sort of thought I have to at least give myself a shot and do music 100% for mm -hmm. a few years and see how it goes. Um, and Right after I finished my master's, I started playing with the Civic Orchestra here in Chicago um, and, you know, did a, a number of different freelancing things, um, started teaching and it just sort of snowballed into where I am now, which I feel very, um, you know, lucky and grateful to have that, that kind of opportunity. Yeah, and with the Illinois Symphony, you won the audition, I think last year. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, just about a year ago, last May. Yeah, and how, yeah. how has it been? Um, because these harp positions don't, you know, don't come by very often, do they? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty rare. I mean, you know, there's only one harp position per orchestra. So it's, you know, one or two auditions per year, if you're lucky. Um, so we're always kind of scouring the international musician and looking online and just seeing what opens up. Um, so I was really glad to see an audition that was only a few hours away from home for me. Um, and it's just been wonderful to be a part of the Illinois Symphony this past year, um, playing with great colleagues and, you know, getting to explore some more of the orchestral repertoire. Now, we're going to talk about the program in a, in a little bit, but obviously these few months for all the musicians, we've been sort of confined almost without any sort of orchestra concerts and so on. How have you been spending your time? Yeah, it's been, it's been strange. I, I was meant to play the ring cycle at the Lyric Opera and actually the day 
that the stay at home order was announced, we had a rehearsal, our final rehearsal of Rangold um, that morning. And so it was a really surreal experience when, you know, that cutoff point happened and everyone in the orchestra was kind of, you know, we sort of knew it was coming just based on news and following the situation. Um, but we had this really, yeah, very surreal meeting with the general director of Lyric on the stage. And they had the set pieces for um, Gotterdämmerung up, this very sort of like, you know, Deathly Hollows kind of scene with these um, obviously set pieces, but like dead bodies hanging on this scrim. And it was all like very, very creepy and, and weird. Anyway, that was like the beginning of my quarantine. <laughs> so it was a very sort of like, you know, it was very upsetting. And obviously, you know, everything that's gone on has just been unlike anything we could ever imagine or prepare for. Um, so for the first few weeks, I was sort of just trying to grapple with that and reading a lot of news and sort of getting overwhelmed with it. Um, but after sort of getting over that initial adjustment, um, it's been really nice to dig back into some solo works for the harp. It's just an amazing catalog. Um, and I feel like I just want to learn all the pieces. Um, and it's been nice to have a little more free time to do that. Um, I also have a big teaching studio. I teach 18 students. So I've wow. been doing a lot of online teaching, um, which has been really nice to sort of continue a sense of normalcy with that. And, um, you know, just connect with my students and make sure that they're also enjoying playing the harp and, um, you know, continuing to grow in that way. Of course, I've been doing a lot of cooking. Um, and I'm also fostering a kitten right now who's named Figaro. Oh my goodness. Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe at the, after the concert, you should uh, have, have the kitten make an, uh, an appearance or something. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be locked away for the concert because he has a habit of like running over my feet. And he's actually started like climbing on top of the harp and trying to like lick the strings. Mm -hmm. So I think wow. I'm going to keep him away for the actual wow. recital, but definitely for the post recital conversation, he should make an appearance. <laughs> Is there a favorite dish that you're now making that you're particularly Ooh. proud of? That is a great question. Um, I've been making a lot of stir fries lately, um, like tofu and eggplant and broccoli and, you know, lots of different things. That's been nice. Um, my boyfriend has been into sourdough, which is like the trend of quarantine, I guess. Um, but his last loaf was an olive loaf, which I mm. love olives and all things salty. So that has been really nice as well. That's really great. Now, Ellie, yeah. tell us a little bit about what you're going to play for us. Yeah, so I was really excited when um, Beth and Chet asked me to, to arrange a French program for the gala. There's just so many amazing works, French works for the harp. Um, it's sort of like the perfect theme for a harp recital. So I... I took a lot of pieces. It's sort of like the greatest hits of French harp music, I think. Um, I pulled a lot on some of my favorite pieces that I learned growing up and um, you know, in my college career. And then I pulled out a few new pieces to learn as well. Um, it's all pretty much all French music or there's sort of a tangential connection to, um, to France for each piece. Um, the first piece I'll play is called Vers la source dans le bois which means toward the fountain or water in the wood um, by Marcel Tournier. It's this really beautiful ethereal piece and it really does sort of take you through this walk in the woods next to a stream. Um, Tournier was a really incredible harpist and composer. And a lot of the, the works on this program are composed by harpists slash composers, um, oftentimes, sort of the greatest hits of the harp repertoire are written by those types of people because they just know the instrument so well. Um, so this piece is just, it's just lovely. It uses a lot of enharmonics, which the harp is especially good at. Um, so that'll be nice. And then I'm moving on to a Toccata by Jean-Baptiste Lullier. Took me a long time to actually understand how to say his last name <laughs> because it's not spelled in the way that you would think. Um, but yes, it's a, a transcription of a harpsichord work by Lillier. <laughs> um, 
and that's really fun. And then another transcription um, of a piano piece called Valse Romantique by Claude Debussy. Couldn't have a French program without Debussy, so I had to throw it in there. Um, and it's a really, really lovely transcription. It, it works basically just as is, um, which is great. It's sort of always what you want with that kind of piece. Um, and then I'll play a piece called Contemplation by Henriette Renier. Um, she was a very religious woman and it's kind of like this sort of, yeah, religious reflection. Um, really, really beautiful, explores a lot of the sonorities of the harp. And again, she was a very important person in the development of the instrument. She actually um, championed the modern double action pedal harp. So that's pretty cool. And then the final piece is by Marcel Grangini, who was a student of Renier's. Um, he was a student of hers at the Paris Conservatory and he later went on to teach at, um, at Juilliard in America and sort of brought her method for the harp to New York. My cat is now chewing on my foot, but anyway, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's this just incredible sort of like tour de force of the harp. It begins with a, um, a Gregorian chant melody and he sort of, he does this kind of theme and variation throughout the piece, um, just, basically using every, every possible compositional technique that you could for the harp. Um, so I'm really, really excited. It's gonna be a great program and I can't wait to share it with everybody. That's really great. So thank yeah. you so much, Ellie, for your time today. And we look forward to the concert. And for those who, of you who are attending and have been wondering what uh, uh, what uh, Ellie's new kitten looks like? Um, you, uh, I, I think she might uh, she she might uh, bring bring the kitten uh, to the concert after afterwards to the Zoom meeting. <laughs> yes, that will be a first a, a kitten at a recital, <laughs> but it is possible at home. So these are you know the silver linings. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It sounds like a really really great program. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Good to talk with you. Thank you.